What's up everyone, Nick here with a brand new exciting show. It's called 52 Weeks of Gaming and the idea is super simple. Each week I play a different game and then give a review of that game. Can't get more simple than that. There's no scoring system, no fully detailed list of pros or cons, just me talking for a few minutes about video games each week. So the first game is Lego Hobbit. Let's get started. Now I'm a fan of the Lego games. I can say I've played a few of them in my time. They take a movie or an idea, something like Marvel or DC in the case, and make a game out of it. The fact that all of the characters are Lego really helps when it comes to some of the details that the movies have, like violence for example. Let's take Lego Hobbit for an example. The game opens with an explanation of how Smaug took over Erebor. A lot of dwarves died, it's something that happens in the movie, happens in the book, and they go into pretty big detail about it. But as Legos though, they just get squished, get thrown into walls, and it looks really funny. That kind of makes it seem like the graphics are pretty basic, but it really shows off how well they can do the facial animations to go along with the voice acting. And it's part of the game's charm. I love it. It's not designed to be difficult. It's not designed to go and be anything that's going to win all these awards for, for gameplay, something like The Witcher 3, for example. But it's designed for LEGO fans who are young, old, everywhere in between, to just enjoy the game. It's kind of mindless in that sense. Now, the plot for these games is always based on the source material. So again, in this case, it's based on the first two Hobbit movies, The Unexpected Journey and Desolation of Smaug. If you've seen the movies, then you're going to know what's going to happen in the game, but if you haven't seen the movies and you don't want to be spoiled, then what is the point of playing the game that kind of ruins it for you? But I can't tell you that now because you play the game. Too bad. But uh, if you haven't, spoiler alert, here's what the plot kind of is. Dwarves want to take back Erebor, they need a burglar to do it, enter Bilbo Baggins. No idea he's a good thief, but a guy with a giant beard and a gray cap goes and tells him so. The dwarves all have these really clever names that fit into this rhyming scheme, except for their leader, Thorin Oakenshield, which, I mean, he's only named Oakenshield because he fought off an orc with a oak branch and it turned into a shield, so not the most creative of folk, but hey, I didn't name him. Now, an interesting concept that is in the LEGO games are the different abilities that the characters have. It's similar to a class system that other games are going to have problem that the lego games have to deal with is that you might have one character that can go and do that so when you're trying to go and complete tasks complete missions you're running into issues there it's one of the things that i don't like about the game you're stuck at a point and you're having to deal with menus and buttons and all these different options to go and figure out which character is going to be best and we're reading over the descriptions to make sure you're picking the right character for the job you can only complete these tasks with with the certain characters so you're kind of kind of stuck otherwise um yeah it, overall i'm going to say the game has a lot of replayability like that's the thing that i think about with all these different characters you're going to be having each level have different collectibles in it which some you can get from the story most you're going to have to go and get afterwards when you go and replay the game with those new unlocked characters and that can be a problem for some of the younger players because it's a bit grindy at that point you're having to go back in a level repeatedly, look up guides, make sure you can go and find like the item that they call the red bricks, bricks wow, I can't talk, uh, in the LEGO games that go and unlock different things like stud multipliers or find all hidden kits, that sort of stuff. For older players like myself who are used to having to go and do grinding and unlocking and all of those horrible, horrible things, uh, it's, it's not that hard. It takes time. It's going to take time, but we've all put in the time quite literally to get these. So all in all, I'm going to say that I enjoy the game. It's a lot of fun. I think anyone who's a Hobbit fan or a Lego fan should definitely go and get it. Um, I also decided, you know, at the end of each video, so right now, uh, I'm going to leave a riddle to give a hint so you can try to figure out what my next game is going to be. So let's see, so the riddle for this week will be, uh, I'm gonna try the voice for this one. <clears throat> Sometimes you gotta go backwards to go forwards. Don't, that was, 
Matthew McConaughey. So I'm sorry that that was bad. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching the video. Uh, you can hit subscribe, like, comment, do all the fun stuff. Keep watching our stuff and stay inept, people. Bye.